things, things tend to have shorter lives. So younger and older in a, in a um, garbage collection system simply refers to, there's a couple ways to count it. One is how many other things have been allocated since you, or how many garbage collection phases have you lived through. And so what tends to happen is, um, yeah, again, it can be number of objects, it can be size of the heap, it could be actual runtime. A, a common approach is also just count cycles or the things you've been, or garbage collection cycle, cycles. So younger things, things that have only recently been allocated, tend to actually die quickly. So think how often you just allocate something quick, use it, and then you're done with it. Older things, if it's been around a while, tend to stay around for a while. Okay. This is the kind of thing you allocate something in the beginning and then um, you keep it around for a long time. Okay. So if it hasn't been around for long, it probably won't continue to be around for long. If it has been around for a while, it's probably going to continue to be around for a while. Um, Another observation, by the way, that I didn't put on this slide, is the larger the object, the more likely you are that it's going to stay around for a while. Okay. So one separate strategy is look at the size of what you're allocating. And I've seen some things that will do a mark and sweep collector for big objects, because big objects don't really fragment your heap as much, and a uh, stop and copy um, actually literally have two heaps. Big stuff, small stuff. Big stuff managed with mark and sweep, small stuff managed with a copy collector. Okay. But let's look at this observation then. Um, so in common list, 15 to 90% of objects die before they are 10 kilobytes old. So before you've allocated another 10K, chances are that that's dead. 15 to 90% chance that it's, it's no longer in use. Um, Glasgow, Haskell, we're gonna, Haskell's the next language we're going to look at. 75 to 95% die within that range. No more than 5% survive beyond one megabyte. So these all support this kind of observation. Some other things like ML, it actually is 98%. Um, so let's actually exploit this idea. So one way we can identify that something is likely to continue to be around for a while, so we want to avoid continuing to copy it, is to look at how long it's already been around. Well, it's not a perfect predictor, but it's not bad. Okay. I mean, the, the odds are in our favor this way. So this introduces the idea of what's called a generational collector. We're actually going to sort out young objects and old objects. Younger ones, we're going to collect more frequently. Older ones, less frequently. Now, it's possible something is in the older one, but um, and, and it might die right away. Okay. I'll get into the details in a moment. I want to be clear, though. Incremental and generational are not the same. Incremental is a garbage collector that runs simultaneously with your program. Generational is using difference between objects based on their age, kind of old and young, old, medium and young, various different strategies like that. Okay. Um, so let me go actually into the, the details here rather than sort of going through the bullets. So what we're going to do is, in addition to the from space and the to space, we're going to actually divide up our heap into two subheaps and you can tune the relative sizes of them. One we're gonna, is where new objects are allocated. So everything new gets allocated in sort of this younger space. And after it's been a while, if it's survived a while, we eventually move it over. We say, OK, you've been around for a while. I'm getting really tired of copying you back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to move you over to the older object space. Okay, This is moving to the retirement home. 
I've used that example for years. It's becoming more and more painful over and over, I get. Um, but so the idea is you have sort of the young, you know, the young hip heap, and then you got like the old folks home, okay? You've been around for a while. You're not cool and young and cool anymore, right? You're not new. It's not exciting. We're going to move you over to the old folks home. Now, <coughs> so you keep allocating everything in the young space. When it fills up, you're going to collect it. But in the, while you're doing a garbage collection pass for the younger space, you're going to look at the stuff you're copying and say, how long have you been around? So you copy. Um, now, that can be um, right away. It could be n number of cycles. That is, you're collecting the young space and copying into the old one. And then when the old one fills up, you actually trigger garbage collection of both. Okay. So let me show you this, and then we'll wrap up. And I'll come back and mention a few details of this next time. And also talk about the assignment and then Haskell. So the idea is, if this is the younger generation, it's from space to space. Older generation, from space to space. I'll keep allocating here. When this fills up, I garbage collect, and I copy stuff over to here so it's compacted. But at the same time, I might take things that are here and move them down or copy them instead to this, the current space for the older generation. So the idea is this one will keep copy, 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 copy. This one just sits here happily not having to be copied around. But eventually this fills up, so you trigger garbage collection of both spaces. Garbage collect this one, garbage collect that one, that might move a bit more over, and repeat. Okay. So you're asking what does Java use? Java uses a generational stop and copy collect.